Hello dear students, welcome back to your channel Hello Pharmacology. In today, let us learn about selective estrogen receptor modulators which is also known as SERMs. So coming to the objective of today's session. So in this class, we are going to learn about the selective estrogen receptor modulator classification. We are going to see the uses as well as the adverse effects of clomiphen, tamoxifen, raloxifen, ospimifen, or meloxifen, etc. So mainly we are going to see the how they are going to act and where they are used and what are the side effects. So coming to the selective estrogen receptor modulator. So these agents are having estrogen agonistic activity in some of the tissues as well as the antagonistic activity in, in other tissues. So these modulators, that's why the name called as modulators. So in specific tissues, they act as a estrogen agonistic activity and in some of the tissues they are going to produce estrogen antagonistic activity so that's why the name estrogen receptor modulator selective estrogen receptor modulators so here comes the beneficial effects so agonistic action can have a beneficial effects in some of the tissues like in the bone it will going to decrease the bone resorption in the blood it will going to improve the lipid profile levels by increasing the hdl levels thereby decreasing the ldl levels and you have a harmful effect due to the estrogen agonistic activity in endometrium in breast where they are going to increase the risk of endometrial carcinoma as well as carcinoma of breast so in the liver it will going to predispose the patient to risk of thromboembolism so agonistic activity on bone as well as blood will have a beneficial effect where it will decrease the bone resorption as well as it will improve the lipid profile if the agonistic action takes place in the endometrium as well as breast it will increase the risk of endometrial carcinoma as well as breast carcinoma if it acts on the liver it will going to increase the risk of thromboembolism next coming to clomiphene so as you know so there is a beneficial effect of estrogen which you can encounter along with that there will also be antagonistic activity where in some of the tissues it will going to antagonize the adverse effects which are produced by estrogen so coming to the clomiphene citrate so let us see in the subsequent slides so what are the important drugs and where they are used so we have a classification under selective estrogen receptor modulator so you have got clomiphene tamoxifen deloxifen tormifen and you have a fulvestrant raloxifen bezidoxifen ospimifen and ormeloxifen so let us revise once again so under selective estrogen receptor modulators examples are clomiphen citrate tamoxifen deloxifen torimifen fulvestrant raloxifen bezidoxifen ospimifen and ormeloxifen so next coming to the clomiphen so in humans this clomiphen has got estrogen antagonistic action in the hypothalamus so clomiphen if they has it belongs to estrogen antagonistic activity it has got estrogen antagonistic activity in the hypothalamus thereby it reduces the feedback inhibition of gonadotropin releasing hormone secretion so basically clomiphen is a estrogen receptor antagonist it produces estrogen antagonistic activity in hypothalamus thereby there will be decrease in the feedback inhibition of gnrh secretion so where this action can be made utilized it can be used in the treatment of anovulatory infertility by increasing the gnrh release so what are the major side effects of clomiphene so the major side effects of clomiphene is since there is a increased release of the gnrh so there there will going to be hyperstimulation syndrome there are going to be 
constant stimulation that leads to polycystic ovarian disease in turn which can lead to multiple pregnancy so remember this five points clomiphene is a estrogen receptor antagonist clomiphene is a estrogen receptor antagonist it acts on the hypothalamus where they are going to reduce the feedback inhibition of GnRH secretion so thereby they can be used in the treatment of anovulatory infertility so the major side effects being polycystic ovarian disease and due to the hyperstimulation it can lead to multiple pregnancy so coming to the tamoxifen, deloxifen and dormifen please remember these drugs possess estrogen antagonistic activity in the breast so thereby it is very useful in the treatment of breast carcinoma it has got agonistic activity in blood so thereby it decreases the boundary uh, in the blood it improves the blood profile where they are going to increase the HDL levels and decreases the LDL levels whereas in the bone it will going to decrease it will going to decrease the bone resorption whereas on the uterus it can cause endometrial carcinoma and in the liver it will going to predispose to thromboembolism so next we have a indication what is the main indication of tamoxifen deloxifen and tormefin it is the treatment of breast carcinoma breast carcinoma because of their antagonistic activity in the breast so what are the beneficial effect it, had, it has got beneficial effect on the bone thereby it reduces the bone resorption it has got beneficial activity on the blood profile where it will going to increase the hdl levels and decrease the ldl levels the only risk factor you should remember is with respect to agonistic activity on the uterus it can cause endometrial carcinoma as well as agonistic activity on the liver it will going to predispose to thromboembolism so coming to the tamoxifen you need to remember three b's with respect to the tamoxifen so three b's beneficial effect so on the breast it decreases the carcinoma it is used in the treatment of breast carcinoma then the blood it will going to increase the hdl levels there as well as it will going to decrease the ldl levels in the bone it will going to decrease the bone resorption so these are the three b's of tamoxifen and three b stands for beneficial effects corresponding to the breast blood and the bone so next coming to the raloxifen and bezidoxifen so raloxifen and bezidoxifen they belong to selective estrogen receptor modulator mainly they are used in the treatment of osteoporosis so why it is used in the osteoporosis they have got higher affinity towards the bone it has got agonistic activity on the bone thereby it decreases the bone resorption thereby it is very useful in the treatment of osteoporosis so what are the beneficial effects so it has got beneficial effect on lipid profile again it will going to increase the hdl levels and decreases the ldl levels it has got beneficial effect on the breast also it can be used in the treatment of breast carcinoma associated with osteoporosis it can also be used in the treatment of endometrial carcinomas so the only the major disadvantage of raloxifen is it will going to predispose the patient for thromboembolism so raloxifen please remember tamoxifen is, is, is used in the treatment of breast carcinoma raloxifen is specifically used in the treatment of osteoporosis so coming to the scent chromin scent chromin is also known as or meloxifen please remember scent chromin is also known as or meloxifen which is used as a non-hormonal contraceptive which is also called as saheli so in your exams if they ask which is the non-hormonal contra oral contraceptive the example you should give is the scent chromin or or meloxifen which is also called as saheli along with that it is also approved for the treatment of dysfunctional uterine bleeding so what are the two two uses of scent chromin or or meloxifen one is the non-hormonal oral contraceptives as well as dysfunctional uterine bleeding so next you have got the osmiphen osmiphen is a new selective estrogen receptor modulator it is mainly indicated in the treatment of dyspareunia due to menopause please remember osmiphen is a newer SERM where it is used in the treatment of dyspareunia due to menopause so we have 
seen the SCRM classification. We have learnt about the uses of clomiphene, which is mainly used in the treatment of anovulatory infertility by increasing the GnRH secretion. So clomiphene is a estrogen receptor antagonist. It produces antagonistic action in the hypothalamus, thereby it inhibits the feedback inhibition in the hypothalamus. So coming to the tamoxifen, tamoxifen has got beneficial effect that is antagonistic activity on the breast thereby it can be used in breast carcinoma. It has got agonistic activity on the bone thereby it decreases bone resorption. It has got agonistic activity on the blood thereby it increases the HDL levels and decreases the LDL levels. The only limitation of tamoxifen or the adverse effect of tamoxifen is it causes it increases the risk of endometrial carcinoma as well as it predisposes the patient for thromboembolism. Reloxifen is also a SCRM. It is mainly used in the treatment of osteoporosis. It has got beneficial effect with respect to the estrogen agonistic activity on the bone, blood as well as breast and endometrium. Only adverse effect of reloxifen is it will going to predispose the patient for thromboembolism. So we have a ospimifen which is mainly used in the treatment of dyspareunia during menopause. And you have a ormeloxifen which is a centochromin which is a non-hormonal oral contraceptive. Other use of ormeloxifen is they are also approved for the treatment of dysfunctional uterine bleeding. So this was about the class on the selective estrogen receptor modulators and their uses and adverse effects. Thank you. If you find this video useful, please do subscribe to my channel I Love Pharmacology and do not forget to share and hit the like button for more updates on pharmacology. Thank you.